You see, many Muslims nowadays, they want to debate to who Christians and, non and other than non-Christians faith, Hinduism, Hindus or Buddhists, etc. But they want to debate, but they do not realize that they are missing the most fundamental principle that never agree on the topics which are non-fundamental. Never. This is the habit of today's Christian missionaries. They want you to go to the side tracks in their own ignorance, in their own shoes, then they want to bash you with their ignorance. And this is what I've been telling to my Muslim brothers and sisters who are new to this field, how not to do da'wah. You must listen this video till end. You see the third category, which Allah has mentioned in chapter 16, verse 125. Today, I'm going to discuss on those people only. The first two people, they are soft people. With wisdom, with good was, with good, with good explanation, they change their hearts. Second, people who do not require any evidence. You tell them, their heart will testify, they believe. But the third category, or criterion rather I say, are those that belong to those people who are rigid, puffed up with pride, ingratitude, with the kabir. For those people, you have to apply the same method they have been applying to you. But that method will also be in a civilized way. We don't want to become like those cheap Christian missionaries, these apologetics, the way they attack Quran, the way they attack Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is not our habit. You see, Christian knows. Christian knows the weak point of Muslim, that we will abuse, we will caricature Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him with lies, with filthy mouths. They know this. And they also know this, that in return, Muslim will not likely to do that. Why? Because we believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. That he was one or he is one of the mightiest messengers of God. So they take this unfair advantage and attack on Muslims. Because they know that it is a blasphemy from the Muslim point of view to say any bad thing to Jesus Christ and they take advantage of that. So today I'm going to educate to my Muslim brothers and sisters not to do these silly mistakes. Number one, whenever you meet these jadalas, these arrogant Christians, these blasphemers, what you have to do? Never talk to them on unfundamental, sorry, non-fundamental topics. Never. Second, they have to speak first because they came before us. According to them, Islam is a new religion. So the first thing must be sorted out for, from the second one. This is a common sense. If you cannot sort out Isaac Newtonian era stuff, it is useless to go Einsteinian era. It's nonsense. You have to see all those old theories then to make a new one. What today Christian wants to do, they want to put you in confusion Muslims by non-fundamental topics and they do not have their own background or ground under their feet. So what they do? Oscillation. Back and forth, back and forth. Like a monkey, like a middle monkey, that's all. I told many times Christians, look, for the sake of an argument, you convince them, uh, one Muslim huh, to be converted. Sooner or later, you have to open your Bible anyways. Why wasting time? Why putting people in conundrum and enigma? Open your own Bible, convince those people, show them that you have better things than Quran. Why Muslim leave gold and go for silver? Why? You see, it doesn't make sense. The first thing must be dealt, then the second one, the latter one. And this is the common sense of the approach of human education and research. 
But anyways, drowning man clutches that straw, so they do what they want to turn the tables. And again, they utterly fail to do them. Why? Because you see, the truth remains truth always. Seek ye the truth, it shall set you free. Jesus Christ said so. Didn't he? 